Hello, Family Chapel. Hope everyone has been having a good start to the week so far. Um, yeah, today we're continuing with our Passion Week devotionals as we reflect upon the cross leading up to Easter Sunday. Uh, so continuing off the topic of sin that was covered yesterday, today I just want to share really quickly about the topic of justification. And in talking about justification, you know, I think we always need to start again with understanding our sin and what our sin does to us. And so due to our sin, we have been separated in our relationship with God and we're destined to face God's wrath for our sin. But however, we know that God did not leave us in our sin to face eternal punishment, 
but provided us with an opportunity for new life through Jesus Christ. And so for our devotional today, we're going to be looking at Romans chapter 5, verses 6 through 11. And so if you have your Bibles with you, you can please turn with me as we go over it together. Again, Romans chapter 5, verses 6 through 11. And we're going to be starting with just Romans chapter 5, verses 6 through 8. And it says, For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one would scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would even dare to die. But God shows his love for us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So God's solution, the problem of our sin, was to send Jesus Christ to die for us. And let's just take this time and reflect on this, because this is the heart of the gospel message. You know, how many of us would be willing to die on behalf of another person? Or maybe if this person is a philanthropist, you know, who donates large amounts of money to charity, then maybe we might consider it. Or if this person is someone like a doctor who you know, dedicates their lives to treating sick patients, then maybe, you know, we might consider it. We didn't then, you know, it, it's not a guarantee, right? I don't know if I will confidently be able to say 100% that I'll be willing to sacrifice and trade my life on behalf of another. And that seems logical. You know, if you want to be making that ultimate sacrifice for another person, you would want to do that for someone that you know, you know, would be worth it to, for someone that you know would, you know, do good work out of that sacrifice. But God did not use that logic with us. You know, again, Romans chapter 5 verse 8, but God shows his love for us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So when the world shows a hesitation to die, even for one who's considered righteous, God demonstrates his love for us by sending Christ to die for us, even though we were not righteous. And this is why we can be so confident in God's love for us. It's not that we did anything, but it was God that initiated his plan for our salvation in which Jesus Christ came to die for our sin. So we see in Christ's death on the cross, you know, we can see God's great love for us, for his people. Uh, but on top of that, you know, through Christ's death on the cross, we have been justified before God. Let's continue to look at Romans chapter 5, verses 9 through 11. Since we now have been justified by his blood, much more shall be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were, we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more, now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. Much more than that, we also rejoice in God for our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. So again, it is through the blood of Christ on the cross that we are justified before God. And in that the wages of sin have been paid for by the blood of Christ, and that we are not judged by God on the basis of our own sin, but through the righteousness of Christ. You know, because of the blood of Jesus Christ, we were saved from the wrath of God, no longer enemies with God, but reconciled with him. The fellowship that was broken between us and God was restored, and we were able to have a relationship with God and experience his presence in our lives. You know, and it's this culminates in a continued hope, right? That we are able to rejoice in God because we know that our relationship with him is for life eternal. It's not just something that we experience once, but it is something that we are constantly being renewed in. That now that our relationship with God is fixed, we have that for eternity. So Family Chapel, you know, as we continue to reflect on the cross during this Passion Week, let us remember the ultimate sacrifice that God made for us. You know, Christ's death on the cross is a physical manifestation of God's great love for us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So let's just take some time to reflect on God's great love for us. Let's take some time to reflect on the death and resurrection of Christ, and that through what Jesus did for us, we have the forgiveness of our sins, the during hope of life eternal with him. So let's spend some time in prayer and reflection.
Father, we thank you once again for just allowing us to be here in your presence, God, as you remember the cross, as you remember what you have done for us, Father. And we truly understand the love of God in which you sent your son to die for us, even though we were not worthy, even though we were still sinners, Father. And that in the sacrifice that Jesus Christ made on the cross, we have the forgiveness of our sins. We have a renewed relationship with you, God the Father, and we are able to experience your promises, your love and your goodness, now and forevermore. And Father, as we reflect upon this, may we give you the, the gratitude that you deserve. May this lead us, Father, into humility. May this lead us into a deeper appreciation and love for you, Father. So thank you for all that you've done for us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.